Hello everyone and welcome to my Bible study, the book of James. Uh, we're studying about James gives a warning about becoming teachers. James 3 and 1 says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Now what James said, my brethren, be not many masters. That's King James terminology for let not many of you become teachers. And what was happening was that many of the recipients were Jewish recipients that were spread abroad over the Roman Empire. They were aspiring to become teachers with wrong motivations. Uh, that ultimately is selfishness. Uh, rabbis in the Jewish culture received much honor and much respect. And this desire, this aspiration to become a teacher really fell into that ideal of a Jewish rabbi. Let me bring this out. When James says teacher, uh, he's really dealing with one of the aspects of the fivefold ministry. But notice there, James didn't say, don't any of you become teachers. He said, don't let many of you become teachers. Literally, it reads this way. Stop becoming so many of you teachers. A lot of them, again, there were a lot of them aspiring to be teachers. And again, with the wrong motivation in mind. And the reality of it is this, not many are called into the fivefold ministry. It's called a teacher there, but you could apply, you could say pastor, you could say apostle, prophet, evangelist. Again, that's the fivefold ministry, Ephesians 4 and 11. The reality of it is this, is that not many are called into the fivefold ministry. But get this, this is not the be all and end all, all right? Uh, it's not the goal to be a part of the fivefold ministry for me and you. That ought not be our goal in life to want to be a part of the fivefold ministry. I want to become a pastor, I want to become an apostle or a teacher. That should not be our goal because the reality of, of it is this. If God's calling you to that, then you're not going to have to make it happen. It's a calling just like God called Jeremiah. He said, before you were in your mother's womb, I called you. Hallelujah. And ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. And Jeremiah would realize that later on, on his own in life, when he was a young man in his early 20s, when God would speak to him that word. So you and I, uh, and this is what I'm getting to, you and I, or any person, we don't have to aspire to become or get into the ministry. Because if God hasn't called you into the fivefold ministry, it's going to be frustrating on your part, and you're probably going to frustrate other people. If God has called you into the fivefold ministry, he will put that desire in you to do whatever he's called you to do. But even when the desire is there, we still have to check our heart and say, Lord, is that from you? Continue ev Continually evaluate our heart. So we're not striving for something for the wrong reason. And in this case here, they were striving to be part of the ministry, to be involved in ministry for the wrong reasons. And this was a selfishness just to get honor, just to get respect from the people, just to get the people to look upon them and say, wow, he's a rabbi, he's a teacher. You know, that's exactly what the Pharisees was doing that Jesus dealt with in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said this, and I'm just summarizing it. In Matthew chapter 6, he said, when you pray, when you give, and when you fast, he said, don't be like the hypocrites. Don't be like the Pharisees, for they do all those things. All they're doing it for is just to be seen and receive the praise of men, doing it for a selfish reason. He said, do not be like them. And I'll just give you this example. He said, when you pray, go into your secret place, go into the closet, 
ba closet, basically by yourself. He said, your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Hallelujah. So we ought not ever aspire to be in ministry just to be seen. And get this, even when God has called a person, even when there is a true calling of God upon a person's life for ministry, there is always that little fox that will spoil the vine of pride and selfishness. And there's some vines that grow in everybody's garden. And selfishness is one of them and pride. That vine grows in everybody's garden. Preachers, lay people, it doesn't matter because of the fall. And with some more than others. Even God called ministers that think they have to be seen and heard. Even when they're not even preaching. We should just relax and receive sometimes. We have to be a receiver before we can be a giver. We all have to be a disciple before we're a teacher. And so that's what James is really dealing with. He said this, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Now, when he said stricter judgment, he was dealing ultimately with the judgment seat of Christ. And I want to give you this scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5, that says it's very... Uh, says it very plainly. He said, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. And so that's what really James is dealing with here. All right, we're going to receive a stricter judgment. And ultimately, it's pointing to the judgment seat of Christ. And it does apply, I believe, to even right here on earth. God's judgment, his evaluation on us here on earth. But ultimately, it's pointing to the judgment seat of Christ. And when James said, we shall receive a stricter judgment, the fivefold ministry receives a stricter judgment because of their influence on the body of Christ. When he said stricter, that means greater, stronger, more thorough. And judgment speaks of at that day, really, when God judges us, uh, especially the judgment seat of Christ. He separates what's of him from what's of us in our lives. That's what he's going to do. We see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. We also see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 9 through 15. Paul goes more into detail here. He says, on that day, it will be revealed as by fire. What was in our life, whether it was of Christ or whether it was of us, that which is of Christ are, are the precious stones, the gold and the silver. That's of him, but everything um, else that's not of him that's wood hay and stubble that's of us and that's going to burn up on that day and he's going to evaluate us our salvation is not going to be judged thank god for that that's already been dealt with praise god but our life will be evaluated and get this past sins will not be brought up at the judgment seat of christ so we can rest assured on that Thank the Lord for that. If you failed and you've asked God to forgive you, that's washed away. God doesn't even remember anymore. We can remember it, but God says, I don't even know what you're talking about. But as a whole, in a way that only God can do it, he will evaluate our life. And that which is of him will stay. It will endure the fire, but that which is not of him will be burned up. And James point, points out here that those that are in the five-fold ministry receives a stricter judgment because of their influence on the body of Christ. Why does the five-fold ministry, why does a teacher receive a stricter judgment from Christ? Why does a more thorough examination, evaluation from God 
because it's an influence on the body of Christ. And that is a huge thing with God, influence. So those who are called into the five-fold ministry have to view themselves in that way because they have influence. And it's God that has given that influence. And so the five-fold ministry has to take it and approach it as Paul did. Paul mentioned this in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He said we have to approach it with fear and with trembling. With fear and trembling. Paul said, I preach Christ in him crucified, not with arrogance. Not with an attitude of I'm here because I deserve it. Because I work so hard. No, but with fear and trembling. That speaks of hum humility. And speaks of how I realize how serious it is what God, what God has called me to. Uh, that tells us that uh, one day we're going to have to stand before God and give an account to God for how we have influenced the body of Christ. And so that's a serious thing. A minister should really lead in a way that he's always leading God's people to the word. Not just our word, but the word. And a lot of people, the only time they get the word is when they come to church. And like that old saying says, as the shepherd goes, the sheep will follow. And let me say this, the pastor's not the source. Jesus is the source and the cross is the means and the Holy Spirit is the power. But the pastor needs to be respected for his position as a steward over God's children. Amen. And the pastor needs our prayers. Amen. That God would give him direction and guidance. That he would not be led astray. So I encourage you to pray for your pastor. And the gospel of Jesus Christ. It needs to be preached and taught with the right attitude also. What was happening to the recipients that James uh, was writing to? They were wanting it for all the wrong reasons. They wanted to be the one behind the pulpit, that everything would come through them. They just wanted to be seen in that way. And that, that's what James is really coming against. He said, stop doing that. Too many of you are doing that. So again, he's not coming against people te uh, becoming teachers. The reality is this, is that not many in that row, not many are called. And what James shows here in uh, verse one is that there are different levels of God's judgment on people. Uh, it's very important. He said a teacher, uh, you could say the five-fold ministry is going to receive a stricter or more thorough, greater judgment from God. Again, it shows us that there are different levels of God's judgment on people. And what's the basis for that greater levels of judgment? I want to give you this verse, Luke uh, chapter 12, verse 48. Uh, this is the main verse, but this is the parable of the faithful servant and the evil servant. Uh, and in verse 48 is the clincher. And Jesus said, but, uh, but he that knew not and did not commit things worthy of stripes uh, shall be beaten with few stripes for unto whom soever much is given of him shall be much required. And to him whom uh, men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. Uh, the main point there is when he said to whom much is given much is required. That's the, that's the basis, basically, of a stricter evaluation to whom much is given, much is required. Um, if you're given greater light, if we're given great understanding, right revelation like the Apostle Paul was, if you're given a greater influence, whatever that might be, then much more is required of you. So whom much is given, much is required. Um, and I encourage you to read that, uh, Luke chapter 12. 
And also I encourage you today to let that be in your thoughts that stirs up within the fear of God. That is a serious thing um, that I need to live by faith. I, I need to do what I do, not out of the wrong mindset because of selfishness or to do it to be righteous before the Lord, but out of faith because God is evaluating us even right now, even by the perfect law of liberty. And, we, and when we stand before him on that day, that's how we will be judged. Is it of faith or is it not of faith? And that concludes my lesson on James 3 and 1. God bless.